Welcome to Virtual Worship with Northley United. Our mission at Northley is to love God, nurture the Spirit, connect with others, and serve the world. Thank you for joining us in worship. To learn more about us, visit our website at northleyunited.ca. This morning, we'd like to wish all the dads a very happy Father's Day. Hello and welcome to Northley United Church's virtual worship. We have a special guest preacher today, Reverend Emily Gordon from Leaside United Church will be offering the message. Welcome to Emily and thank you for joining us. We will be gathering through Zoom next Sunday, uh, the 27th, for a special pride service. We'll be joining with Leaside Presbyterian Church and uh, they celebrate their worship services together on Zoom, so we'll be following their routine next Sunday. You'll get information through News Bites how to connect, and if that format is difficult for you or you cannot be there at 10.30 on Sunday morning, we will have a recorded version of the service posted later in the day for you to access. So you will be able to join us for service on June 27th. It will be just a little different than usual. Once again, check News Bites for information or contact the office. Also, for our July summer services, there'll also be an announcement in News Bites. So if you're wondering how to connect in July, then uh, do see News Bites or check out our website, northleyunited.ca. As we begin our worship, we will acknowledge, is, as is our tradition, the culture, tradition, and spirituality of the Mississaugas of the Credit, who came to this place long before we did, and our responsibility for the territory on which our church and our homes reside. With that now, let us continue with our worship. God gives strength to those who are oppressed and to those who are oppressors. Christ invites them to awaken. We are oppressed and oppressors seeking liberation and awakening. We gather now open to the power of the Spirit to affirm our hope and inspire our compassion in the Spirit of Christ who leads us to wholeness. Is revealed in time and space. 
As we share in Christ the feast that frees us, all are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where hands will reach beyond the wood and stone. and live the word they've known. Hear the outcast and the stranger bear the image of God's face. Let us bring an end to fear and danger. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where all our names, their songs and their visions heard and loved and treasured, taught and claimed as words within the word, built of tears and cries and laughter, prayers of faith and songs of grace. Let this house proclaim from floor to rafter, all are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. May the peace and light of Christ be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. God, the Holy Spirit, you are the restless breath of love that sweeps through the world. You move where you will, breaking down barriers, stirring hearts to change, making all things possible. Inspire each one of us to hunger and thirst for justice. Come, Spirit of God, sweep through our world, bringing great change. May the bounty of your goodness be shared most justly, so all may share in the rich blessings of your creation. And for us, bring transformation in our praying and living, so that we may act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you all the days of our lives. Amen. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, open our hearts and our minds to your mystery and grace. Guide us to the truth and wisdom we most need to hear as we listen for your still small voice in our sacred story. Amen. The story of David and Goliath, which comes from the book of 1 Samuel. God's people, the Israelites, were getting ready to fight an enemy army. David's brothers were soldiers in Israel's army. They were camped with King Saul and the other soldiers on a hill. The enemy army was on another hill across the valley. The enemy army had a soldier named Goliath. 
Goliath was very big, very strong, and very tall. He was a giant. Every day Goliath would shout mean things at King Saul and the Israelites. Then he would say, Choose someone to come and fight me. If he wins, we will serve you. And if I win, you must serve us. King Saul and his men were afraid. They were used to fighting together. And Goliath was so big that no one wanted to fight Goliath by himself. One day David came to the camp to bring his brothers some food. David heard the giant yelling. David was very angry because of all the mean things Goliath was saying about God and the Israelites. David couldn't understand why no one would fight Goliath. David knew that God was stronger than the giant, and David knew that God would help the Israelites win. One of the soldiers told King Saul what David was saying, so King Saul sent for David. When David arrived, he told King Saul, I will fight Goliath. King Saul said, You can't do that. You're just a boy. But David answered, When I was taking care of my father's sheep, I had to kill a lion and a bear. I know that the Lord who helped me protect my sheep from lions and bears will help me fight the giant. Saul wanted David to wear the king's armor and use his sword. But when David tried to walk around with all those things on, he said, I can't fight in these, and he took them off. So King Saul said, Go, and the Lord be with you. Then David went and found five smooth stones to use with his sling. Now he was ready to fight the giant. When Goliath saw David, Goliath got angry. He thought the strongest and biggest soldier in King Saul's army would come to fight him, but this person was just a young man. He didn't have a sword, he didn't have a spear, he didn't have a shield, he didn't have anything except a sling. So Goliath yelled, Come here and I will kill you. As the giant came closer, David ran toward him. David put a stone in his sling and shot it at the giant. The stone struck Goliath in the forehead. Goliath fell down and died. When the enemy army saw what had happened, they were afraid and started to run away. King Saul and his army chased after the enemy army and killed them. David trusted God to help him, and God used David to help save the Israelites from the enemy army. In this reading, we hear God's voice. The Spirit is still speaking. Thanks be to God. Take one. Malcolm Gladwell's book, David and Goliath, takes this, this story from scripture as a starting point to talk about underdogs. He argues that underdogs like David are surprisingly successful, particularly when they use unconventional approaches. When they cast aside conventions, just like David abandons the conventions of warfare of the time, of heavy armor and weapons, and instead takes only his slingshot, and then significantly also speeds up the counter with Goliath rushing forward, surprising him, catching him unaware, and taking advantage of that situation in order to win. But perhaps the argument that Malcolm Gladwell is making isn't a surprising one for us. At an intuitive level, we're in line with the idea of Goliath losing to David. We resonate with David, with the underdog success story. We can think about how important this is in our cultural narratives just by thinking through some of the many uh, sports underdog movies that exist. There's The Mighty Ducks, Cool Runnings, Lagan, Million Dollar Arm, Million Dollar Baby, Karate Kid, Space Jam, and countless others. In Canada, we might also think about this underdog narrative as something that resonates with us as we continue to contrast ourselves with South of the Border. We can feel like the small underdog story that doesn't match up to the success of the larger nations. But what happens when we lose sight of what we do and who we are when we get caught up in this underdog narrative? Certainly, the David underdog story can appeal to us at an individual level when so much seems overwhelming, particularly right now. During these COVID times, we can feel like the disciples on the boat with Jesus caught up in the storm, worried about what will happen, not understanding anyone who isn't concerned. We, like those disciples, might be crying out in fear, feeling completely overwhelmed. And in the storms of life, we long to succeed. 
to find hope, to find health, to find happiness, to find love, meaning, a team. And so we hear the story of David and Goliath as one of hope, one that can resonate with us. Take two. But what happens when we take a step back from the personal approach to the story of David and Goliath and think about it as a conversation about power and force and who has it? When we listen to this story and think not just in personal terms, but in systemic terms, in societal terms, in terms of our own cultural history, we who are not Indigenous people might reflect on it in the context of National Indigenous Day of Prayer today. In this framework, we are not David. Instead, we are Goliath, or at least, if not Goliath, are all of the Philistines gathered behind Goliath, perfectly content to allow him to use the power and force necessary to succeed. And it makes sense, too, to reflect on the story in this context as a conversation about land. See, both the Israelites and the Philistines wanted land, needed land, felt that land mattered, felt that they needed to defend and protect and expand. And the land itself was good, but difficult. There needed to be wells. There wasn't just water everywhere. They needed enough space for their flocks of sheep in order to have food to eat. Land was a scarce, a precious resource. And so in this moment, as in so many moments, there was conflict over land. And the Israelites were there trying to defend their claim on this land. And if David had not stepped forward with a slingshot and won that encounter, then the Israelites as the weaker people in this moment would not have had the same story. And David, with that encounter, ensured that the Philistines did not have that land, did not have that same story. How often land is taken away from those who don't have the power, the strength, the numbers, the technology in order to defend it, or who intentionally choose not to engage in violent acts in order to maintain and control and defend land. In Canada, we reflect on the ways that force has been used, that might has been used to justify actions that take land away from others. And how deep the harm that has caused truly is. So when we hear the story of David and Goliath, we might be afraid that we are not actually David, but on the other side of the story. And if that's the case, then what does the story tell us? Take three. Maybe the problem is not so much whether we're David or Goliath, but the story itself. The idea that force and might and power are necessary to get what we want, to defend what we have, to succeed, to live. In fact, a David and Goliath framework is always going to set up people who win and people who lose. And whether we think about it on individual terms or in collective terms, that's a story that does not benefit all of us. And we see again and again in our society, and we hear again and again during this pandemic about the people who lose, who don't have the time or the power or the technology because it has been denied, taken away, 
it has been not possible because of the systems that have been set up by those who do have the power and time and technology. And in a country like Canada, we can forget who those with power truly are. And we forget, can forget the privilege that many of us, many of us who are not racialized, who are not indigenous, who are not set at the margins in other ways, encounter on our day-to-day -day basis. We don't want to be Goliath, assuming that power and authority make things right. And I think neither do we want to be David, finding other unconventional ways to win, but still defeating others, still ending up with death and loss. Instead, we want a third way, a third way that finds creative solutions that's based on conversation and listening and learning and unlearning, not on violence as a way to resolve conflicts. A third way that honors the wisdom that people carry that is attentive to the trauma that people bear, that understands that from the very, very beginning of all things, God, the creator, looked at the world and said, this is good. And that we then are called to recognize the goodness in our own actions, both individually and collectively of all people of all those we encounter, and of all of creation. So may we continue to learn and to listen, to unlearn and to grow, to share our stories and to carry the stories of others. And in this, and on all things, may we remember that we do this because this is God's work. This is God's love, which is greater than any of us, and which does not resolve things with violence or conflict, but finds third ways, creative, courageous conversations and transformations towards a world that works for all. Amen. When I think of all the times the world was ours for dreaming When I think of all the times the earth seemed like our home Every heart alive with its own longing Every future we could ever hope to hold All the time our laughter rang in summer All the times the rivers sang our tune Was there already sadness in the sunlight? Some stormy story waiting to be told Where, oh, where has the innocence come? Where, oh, where has it gone? Rains rolling down wash away my memory When I think of all the joys, the wonders we remember 
All the treasures we believed we'd never ever lose Too many days gone by without their meaning Too many darkened hours without their peace Where, oh where has the innocence gone? We once swore Now it's just this letting go Where, oh, where has it gone? Let us pray. Be gracious, O Lord, and look upon your church throughout the world, guiding its search for the unity for which Jesus prayed. Rise up, O Lord, and hear our prayer. Be gracious, O Lord, and look upon the distress of those who are persecuted for their faith, as was the Azal family members killed in London, Ontario. And take care of those whose path ahead seems dim, those who are victims of oppressive relationships, such as the 215 young souls irreverently buried in Kamloops, BC. Look upon the needy, that they may know the warmth of your faithfulness, that their hope may not be snuffed out like a fitful candle flame. Rise up, O Lord, and hear our prayer. Be gracious, O Lord, and look upon those whom we name today and those named in our hearts, that in the darkness of their circumstance they may feel the gentle light of your presence. Rise up, O Lord, and hear our prayer. Lord God, let your glory appear among us and make us sharers of your eternity with all your saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us away from temptation and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Shape the world around through my sight.
Thank you so much for joining us today and thank you once again to Emily for sharing your message with us. Remember that next week we'll be joining with Leaside Presbyterian Church through Zoom and the information is on our website. As you go about your week, may you know that God is always with you, that Christ walks among us and the Spirit is moving within and around us always. With love. Amen.
as well uh, just wanted to let you know that there's something else I probably wanted to say and now I don't Next remember what week. it was <laughs>